Hi everyone, it's Alan with Earth Glow, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I make pumpkin bread vessels. So I'm putting two cups of cement all into this larger silicone bowl, and I have these bowls linked for you all in the description. They're really nice because you are able to reuse them over and over. And then in that smaller bowl, I just put one cup and I'm gonna be putting one tablespoon of this beautiful orange and one tablespoon of titanium dioxide in the smaller bowl. The orange is gonna go into the larger bowl. Now you can measure this out with a gram scale, but I find that using tablespoon measurements, as long as you're consistent, you're gonna be just fine. But if you are new to these pigments, um, just make sure that with these or with any concrete pigments that you're only using 5% maximum of your weight of your concrete. And that is just so that it doesn't compromise the stability of your vessel. But I'm going to be just going in with a spatula and integrating them with the dry cement all before I add the distilled water. And this will just kind of help the pigments to blend a little bit better once I do add that water in. But you can definitely just add the water. Um, some people like to incorporate it better that way, but for me personally, um, I get the most blended um, pigmentation when I incorporate the pigments with the dry um, concrete. And I will usually spend several minutes sometimes doing the, just kind of blending them together, maybe like 30 seconds to a minute, I guess. I have found with this craft that going slower definitely um, helps you just to get the best quality. Um, I showed at the beginning of this video as well that I was wearing a KN95 or an N95 respirator or some sort of a respirator that is going to be good for keeping out basically an asbestos grade respirator if possible. Um, there's no asbestos in this, but concrete, um, the cement all concrete does have airborne respirable silica, which you can see that dust right there that is just so bad to breathe in and when i first started working with this material i did not know that and i didn't wear a mask for like a couple of months and i'm telling you all it that is such a bad idea <laughs> so anyways i just added my distilled water and i am gonna be just mixing this and you can see how it already has turned this kind of burnt orange burnt umber would you call it kind of beautiful pumpkin-y orange already but it's gonna get even better as it mixes more so i'm just smashing the clumps on the side of the bowl and i get my other one going kind of midway through mixing the first one there's no like right or wrong to this but what you do have to keep in mind is the cement all is gonna set up really fast so you have limited time to work when you're mixing them. But I will just kind of get them both going and kind of alternate back and forth between them. So this is the bowl that has that one cup of cement all and one tablespoon of um, the titanium dioxide just to make it a little bit wider. Cement all is going to be kind of a gray tone if you don't add any pigments or oxides to it. And I do tend to like to work with a thicker mixture when I'm doing colors like concrete pigments than I do um, when I'm doing my metallic colors with the acrylic paints because the Metallics will get lost if your batter is too thick. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, I just like to get it pretty thick and that way I minimize the air bubbles. The distilled water is one component that almost everyone who does concrete, well, I shouldn't say that. I should say probably like half of the people to 75% of the people who do concrete don't measure it exactly. Um, cement all, it typically needs to be at a five to one ratio or some people say a four to one ratio of water to cement all in order to have a stable vessel. And if you've actually measured that out before, that's a lot of water. Your batter is so thin when it's anywhere close to that. So the ratio that I typically use with my cement all is way, way more, um, way less water to cement all personally. But what I'm doing here is just pouring these and kind of alternating back and forth. Even with all that mixing, you will get some teeny, tiny to mid-sized clumps with this. And don't worry about that. It is not gonna make your final product ruined at all. Um, I used to get so hung up on that when I first started this, but I realized that it's just part of doing something by hand. Obviously, you want to minimize the clumps, but you definitely, um, it, it's almost impossible to eliminate them. And I just want to encourage you, if you're having trouble with that, that you are going to get beautiful vessels. Um, and that is what I have to say. So what I like to do is I like to get four of these going at once and I will go probably three quarters of the way full with them. And then I'll just wait until I get the next one and the next one going pretty much. Um, I guess I'm almost all the way full. But the reason I do this is because of how fast the batter sets up. I want to get the swirls pretty consistent in all of these vessels so that I get of course, not a uniform look, but just a consistent look with my product. Um, there's gonna be a lot of variation from vessel to vessel, but I think you all kind of understand what I mean. Just kind of a consistent, consistent within the variation. So I will then pause and kind of give them all a little bit of a tap and then top them all off. And what I'm looking for is to have the concrete flush with the top of that silicone mold. That is going to minimize the amount of sanding that I will have to do once these are demolded, and it's just gonna produce the most seamless look. So if you go too low, you'll have a lot of sanding to do, but if you go, to, if you go too high, you're also gonna have quite a bit of sanding to do. And I played around with this for a really long time before I've been able to pretty consistently get them um, to where um, I still have to sand, but just not as much. And I do do my sanding on these on a um, pottery wheel with a diamond sanding disc that attaches to a bat on the pottery wheel, just because I like to wet sand. You can also just use a piece of sandpaper and wet sand in the sink, but I think it's really important to do this wet when you're sanding it, as in you're using water with the sandpaper, just because you don't want to be breathing in that dust from this concrete. I am so happy with this color, you all. It's like a very pumpkiny orange. You're going to see at the end of this video, I'm actually going to make some candles. You'll kind of see a quick version of that and the orange I am just, I'm thrilled with. This mix that I did will allow you to make four of these three inch silicone tulip molds from Modern Craft Labs, but you will have a little bit of batter left over at the end. And I would approximate if you don't spill very much that you would have enough to make an extra half of a vessel at the end, or maybe a third of a vessel. Um, but if you do use a little bit more water than me, you might be able to get five vessels. Um, yeah, I'm just showing there what I have left.
And here's what these look like after about four to five hours. I like to let them sit, especially in cooler weather. Oh no, this is after I just poured them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can kind of see the sheen. This, what I'm showing now is after four or five hours. And then I will go ahead and demold. Um, this is my favorite part of making concrete. I absolutely love the mystery of demolding. So I will kind of get them all started. And, oh my gosh, I love how these turn out, you all. And after I do different colors, I will wash out my concrete. I'll invert them, wash them in the sink, and then put them back and let them dry on a wire rack between each color change, just because I don't want that cross-contamination of colors. And that's the best way I've found to prevent it. And then I'm gonna be sealing these after, you can do it after 24 hours. I've never had an issue with that, but ideally, um, if you can wait up to five days or longer, but that would be ideal, just so that way all the water gets evaporated. And then I will seal them with two coats um, of direct, direct colors, <laughs> not direct colors, um, earth safe finishes, preserver slash sealer. I'm gonna probably make a video making some hydrostone vessels at some point. I saw the Up Vibe candles video on it. And then I know Brie with Calafia Candle Co made one as well. And I, by the way, if you're not familiar with both of those channels, please go and support them. They're fantastic and so um, monumental in, I would say, necessary in the concrete world. So yeah, I'm thinking of doing, switching to hydrostone if I can, just because it doesn't have that silica when you're making them. This is gonna be after I sealed them. I did go ahead and put labels on them beforehand and I'm using this uh, piston funnel, which I will have linked. This is so, so, so necessary in my opinion if you're making concrete candles because it really helps to minimize spilling because if any of you know this with concrete, if you spill one little drop on the concrete, it's ruined. Like it's not gonna affect the candle, but aesthetically it's ruined. Oh my goodness, you all, I absolutely love how these turn out. So I'm using number seven wax with a CDN seven. Now you could probably increase to a CDN eight, but that is what I'm doing here with 10% fragrance. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited with how these came out. And I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light. And I'm wishing all of you happy candle making. <laughs>